Hey guys, RC here. Welcome back to a new episode and the start of a new season. You might want to sit down. You might want to buckle your seatbelt because there's been some shakeups here in the last couple of days as I've been uh, advancing forward to the start of a new season. Um, we're moving clubs and, um, I've accepted a job. I just finished the contract negotiation. So if you're looking at the headers up there, you might be able to tell where we're going. So let's pull up the game. And we are going to take the job at Eintracht Frankfurt in Germany in the Bundesliga. We'll go through the team a little bit. So this is going to be kind of a weird episode. We'll go through it might be a little long because we have to go through it. I do want to get to the first match today, if I can, because we're not doing any transfers, but we have to do the job change, right? So let's get into that. Uh, we're signing a three-year deal, $193,000 a month, $90,000 bonus for winning the Pokal. I tried to get them to give me a bonus for winning the Bundesliga, and qualifying for Champions League, they didn't give me that. Um, so I don't, I don't know why you think that would be a a good thing. The goal this year is to avoid a relegation battle. I am disappointed that we're not going to be in the Champions League with Volan Lusk. I was I was looking forward to that, but as I said, you know, three years, I was kind of ready to move on. And we're going to look at a couple of things. So let me finalize the deal. Exit the talks. Before we jump ahead and I actually am given the job, let's take a look at the jobs. So here's the list of jobs currently available. So we had a lot of international jobs available. Uh, in fact, if we go to Atletico Madrid and look at their head coaches, uh, he resigned, Bohan Prelik. Uh, he is now the head coach for Croatia's national team. If we look at uh, Frankfurt and their head coach, he resigned after four years, and he is now the Netherlands head coach. And then some other clubs. I looked at this club. He resigned. He's now the head coach of Belgium. So some of these international jobs fell right at the last minute. And all of these other jobs opened up all of a sudden. Now, I'll be honest. I was looking at Freiburg and Bauckham possibly. Maybe even SV Werder. I was looking at those as possible jobs that, that were interesting to me. But... Because these weren't even, Frankfurt and Standard weren't even on the list. These came out of nowhere because they took international jobs. Obviously, you saw how long the, their managers had been there, so they give you a pretty long rope. They're strong teams. I mean, four and a half star potential for Frankfurt. I looked at Madrid. I wasn't interested in Willem II because my other saves already in the Arita VC. I looked at Standard. It just didn't it just didn't strike me. And when I looked at Frankfurt, I'll be very honest, this is what got me. They've never won I mean, this is what got me. So this club was founded in 1899. They've only won they were one of the 16 original Bundesliga teams. Uh they've only won it once in a hundred and 60 years, basically. They've won the Euro Cup once, the Pokal five times, only once this century, and it's been 34 years since they won it. And they only won the Bundesliga twice. So even when they got relegated, they came up finishing second, not winning the league, and then they've basically been a mid-table team. So their highest finish ever was fifth. So this, this, this is what got my attention. I said, this is a long-standing club, a rich history, but nothing to show for it. In the scheme of things, right? Nothing to show for it. 
I said, that's something that you could build on and really make a impact, right? So I said, that's, that's something that gets me. And I said, there has to be something that gets my attention. So we've got secure finances, could be better. There was one thing I did not like. The owner loves the club. Season tickets, 29500 We've got a huge stadium. And they've only got four legends. And they've got a good stack of, of icons, but no favored personnel. I think it'll be pretty easy to crack favored personnel if we do well. Getting into icon and legend status, a little bit harder. But let's take a look at the facilities. This is what I don't like. The, the, they pay $9.4 million a year in rent, and it's to the city council. Not happy with that. If we can get on more secure financial footing, maybe we can buy the stadium or build our own stadium. But 42,200 seats, room for expansion on seats like that. Good corporate facilities, excellent training, and superb youth facilities. Excellent academy coaching, exceptional youth recruitment. I said it's got all the things that you would want down here. And they draw a metric shit ton, I think is the scientific term, uh, of fans. Now, you got to remember, they did not become active until this past year. So we don't really see anything showing up for them. But I was looking in and doing some research. Look at this. They played Spal and drew 40,000 for a friendly. And Red Bull Salzburg, they drew 20,500 for a friendly. Uh, but that was a way. So 40,000, almost 41,000 fans for a home game on a friendly. I was like, Jesus, that's crazy. Um, so that got my attention. We do have a couple of friendlies left that I will have to get to. Uh, but I wanted to show you this. Uh, so let's go ahead and advance. Well, first off, let's jump over here. I figured we could afford a $20 million house at 50% of our monthly earnings. I don't need that big of a house. So there's only 10 homes. There's a lot of apartments and smaller, you know, single. But, you know, if I'm going to move my family there, right? Uh, assuming I have a family in game. That's interesting, but I think 11 million is a little outrageous. So I saw this one. It's really the only house. Everything else is apartments. So seven and a half million dollars. It's got a nice little walk up here with a little reflecting pond on it. That's pretty cool. A little waterfall. You have a lot of glass in it. That's a little modern for me, but you know, I don't like the look of that. But you know, it is interesting. I don't know if that's the living room or the kitchen. I'm guessing it's the kitchen, but that's a big ass TV to have in your kitchen. I mean, even us Americans don't have, well, this American doesn't have that a big ass TV in his kitchen. Mine's in the living room, right? Of course, uh, Lelugio would like the chairs. We know that if you watch his channel. Uh, interesting tub with a great view. That's actually a castle up on top of the hill. Nice little seating area with a fire pit out in the uh, in the yard. And then they do have this deck with some shade and a little area. I think that would be good if I could catch Wi-Fi out there. I could watch my game film and do my diagramming out here. It'd be a nice little work area, assuming we have decent weather. Little step terrace out in the yard. Nice green grass. And there's that castle, a better view. Um, I wonder if this is part of the property. Probably not, but... That's a really good view. Not not a whole lot of you know clutter. Now I don't know where this is in relation to the stadium. Uh, I guess we could look that up. Oh, it's the medieval town of Konigstein, sixteen thousand inhabitants. I like that because oh Frankfurt Center is twenty five minutes. Uh, the airport is twenty five minutes by car. Not a problem. I could probably afford a driver as well. That's perfect. That's what I was looking for. So this is in, I'm going to have to copy that, Konigstein. And all right, so Deutsche Bank Park is where they play. And let's get to Konigstein. 
much better. All right, so Deutsche Bank Park is here. So we are up in the northwest area. A little more outlying. Let's go to satellite view. So yeah, you kind of get out of the city center getting out here. I like that. Uh, I'm not a big fan of major urban areas. I live in Houston, but you know I, I'd still live on the outskirts in a subdivision suburb. Uh, but that's uh, that's not a bad bad drive. 25 minutes for me is nothing. Um, I have hour commutes every day, so 25 minutes I could do that with my eyes closed. <laughs> and you have the uh, the river Main or Mine that we would cross. We could even take the scenic route this way and come around the backside. Probably less traffic. That's 32 minutes. I could still live with that. But anyway, let's get down to the park. So there's Frank. There's Frankfurt. Uh, this is the area we would be living in up here. And then zooming into the park down here. I have a golf club. Nice. Not sure I'll have time to play golf, but I do enjoy a round of golf. I'm not good at it, but I enjoy it. All right, so there's our stadium. That's nice. Let's go ahead and click on here so we can access. Uh, let's come in on the road here. All right, so there's a side view of our stadium. Pretty nice looking. Now, one of the things I noticed, uh, no, it wasn't this stadium because I was looking at, at various things. So, yeah, I mean, you know, nothing wrong with that. It's a nice looking stadium. Uh, let's go ahead and jump inside. Let's come up on the first level. No clue what that is. Is that watering the grass? Is that drying the grass? No clue. If you know what those are, let me know. So we've got, uh, yeah, just the big oval. Reminds me of uh, 1980s style uh, baseball stadiums. Just not quite as round. So that's our stadium, and then uh, the name of the club is the Eagles, I believe. They spent 51 seasons in the top division, the seventh longest participating club, but they've only got one title. So we need to rectify that event eventually. And yes, the Eagles. Is that uh, D. Adler? D. Adler, the Eagles? That's what I'm going to go with. And they've been around uh, for 121 years, plus 30 plus now. So over 150 years in game. And uh, so let me do this. I'm going to hit pause on the recording, get our friendlies done, set up tactics, start looking for some signings possibly. Let's go ahead and move forward one day. All right, there we are. Frankfurt Higher Cajun. Eyebrows have been raised at the appointment of the 34-year-old. Stanislav Nuri Malish was considered the favorite, but following his public denial of any interest, the club moved in a different direction. Oh, by the way, after last episode, I did win Coach of the Season in, U in Ukraine, so Coach of the Year last year. Proven credentials and a blend of experience to his new job. We've got a reputation for signing players under the age of 23, which is the only goal that they have for me that I have to do. So that's interesting. And, yep, there we go. So let me go take care of business, and we will come back. We'll take a look at some players, any signings that I do manage here in the next uh, week or so while uh, we're getting to the first game. And we'll be back to start it off. See you guys back here in a second. All right, guys. Well, we're back. Let's jump into Volin real quick. We're going to look at their transfer center. Uh, they got an offer for, for Camps and Kravinko from us, uh, which they rejected outright. They don't want to sell him. And they rejected uh, the, the loan for Philip Camps. Uh, they are working on some deals for Gargushka and Marta Nuvek, uh, some younger players. But taking a look, after we left, 
They have loaned uh, camps out to Slavin Belupo for an $84,000 a month fee. And Mustafa Mendy goes off to PSV for nine and a quarter. I thought he was going to play a lot this year. Uh, they also bought in Nikolai Cord Cordino for $2.8 million. Or did I bring him in? I don't remember. I think I brought him in. I don't think he had signed yet, but that was a new guy that we signed. So that's what's going on there. Let's take a look at finances. This is over in Germany now for our new team. We're sitting on $86.7 million, steadily increasing. No real major changes. I don't know if I've ever seen that straight a line in Football Manager. Uh, profit and loss, we've got expenditures of $10 million, income of $17.6, and most of that is uh, players sold $15.5 million. When I took over the club, we were already over the wage budget, so I had to make an adjustment to payroll. Uh, we have sold a couple of players now, so it has gone down, but we're fine. Uh, let's see. As far as transfers, we've made a few deals. We've tried to sell some players, which we have. So I took over right at the end of the month. They had already sold these first three players. Uh, these first two I would have kept. <laughs> I would have sold this guy. But uh, Oroberto goes off to Belenese for $7.5 million. Uh, he's 31 years old, Brazilian. He's a striker. He's not bad. Uh, taking a look at his history, we bought him for 5.75, keep him for three years, sell him off for a slight profit. And uh, he had seven goals in 27 matches, 17 starts the first year, and then uh, seven reserve appearances and one start, one reserve last year. Kind of gone backwards. Just He's like fifth or sixth choice striker. Didn't see the need for him, so I moved him on. Alexander Pohl goes off to Sausalo for $10 million. He's a very useful player. Now, he did not have uh, – he was not nationality. I was looking to see it because you have to have so many Germans in your squad, and we don't. We're really short. But he is not German. Very similar situation, very far down the pecking order. Very good player, but just – too much, too many, too much competition. Uh, he had 42 starts, no goals. So we move him off, and you can see he's only a 51 rating. Now, according to this, it says he would have been our top choice. Yeah, I would debate that. <laughs> so uh, he goes off, and then uh, Sharano Dira, we loan him out to Willem, uh, who also offered us an interview, which we turned down. Uh, Atletico Madrid also offered us an interview. Prior to taking this job, turned it down. Didn't even interview with him. Now, Dira, not a bad player. Now, I thought about keeping him, but right now we have attacking wingers and no real midfield wingers. And I know those guys can drop back. I've done it before. But I've got somebody that's equally as good at a number 10, and he's like fifth choice at center back, at center half center mid whatever and so i and he's dutch he's not german so i felt i could get rid of him and we made some money on him and you know cut salary lowered our wage bill added some more money in the kitty so we've sold out 28 million uh 17 million on my watch and we brought in uh armin brugger from rapid vienna 3.8 million i'm finding so far and i'm trying to remember you guys may recall, I don't recall managing in Germany before. I may have. I know I've done Spain. Oh, well. I'll have to go look. I have a list that I keep. I, I didn't even look at it. But I don't recall managing in Germany. If I did, it's been a long while. What I liked about this guy is he'll be our, he'll be our deputy at left and right back. Uh, and he can do a job at center back as well. Brings in some height at six foot four. All the, all the skills that we need. A little lacking on passing, but uh, he'll be like third, fourth option at center back. Not gonna, you know, so he's not great. Valued at 4.8, so we get a little value, and he's on a pretty low wage bill 
at 160000 a month. He's the only player that we have brought in so far. Now, we are looking at, uh, <laughs> check this out, Lincoln City, English Premier League, boys. And if we look at the history of them, so they started in League One, and they've worked their way up, championship, relegated, promoted, uh, a few years in the championship, actually finished second in the championship, and they've been a mid to lower half of the table, but never finishing below 15th, so they've done really well. Still not much in the way of titles, one League One, four League Two, but they've done well, and they've made the Premier League. So I thought that was interesting. They've made an offer for uh, Willem Ghislaine. Now, he's 27. Normally, I would not be adverse to selling him. He's Belgian. He has no German, abil uh, no German nationality. So he doesn't hurt me in rules as far as having players. But he's our number one center back. Six foot four, very good all-around player. 7.1 in the Euros uh, in five matches. So I said, you know what? I'm not going to sell him. And he's valued at 25 and a half, and they're going up to 35 and a half. I'm wondering if I should take it, but I'm, I'm not going to. I'm going to sit on that. Uh, I am looking at a couple of center backs. So it's possible that I could uh, bring somebody in. Uh, let's see, we're looking at uh, Martin Stratura. We've made a transfer offer on him. Uh, Arno Hilgers, I've made a $10 million offer on him. And Horst as as Oshauer, Osier? I don't want to say Asshat. Horst Oshauer, Oshauer, something like that. He's 15 years old. Uh, we've made a transfer offer for him. That was something my... Uh, uh, director of youth football did and I've, I've got him just making offers on young players thinking he'll go after a lot of German players and we've got nothing in our youth ranks so uh, that's what's going on there uh, we've also got some some more staff coming in speaking of uh, staff we had to really bring in we only had three coaches so we've got a lot of coaches coming in uh, we only had three scouts, so we brought in four more scouts. So I'm pretty good there. And we uh, brought, we're bringing in a head physio. Come on, get that off. Uh, we're bringing in a head physio. We've already brought in one more physio, and we're looking at one more sports scientist as well. So yeah, and we've got a chief scout that we're bringing in. So we've rounded up the the scout the the staff pretty good. And uh, that's looking good. So let's go look at our team selection. We'll get to know the players as we get through it. But uh, we're going to be going with uh, Amir Harambasik in goal. He's 33 years old. And I don't know what that is. What is that? B-I-H. Bosnian. Bosnia-Herzegovina, right? Is that is that right? I think that's right. Not really a big fan of this guy, 33. I know that is kind of in the prime for keepers. He's not very good, right? I mean, he's decent first touch. He's going to do the job. I want to upgrade that probably next year. Uh, on, the on the right side, Christian Gunderson from Denmark. He is 19 years old. And we're probably needing to play somebody else over there. Oh, I know what it was. I think I'm looking at another left back. So if I get him, Sahin can move to the right. So Gunderson's going to be on the right right now, 19 years old. I'm starting Tim Stover today. Uh, he is German, 32 years old. Uh, so he's a veteran. Six foot four, brings in some height, very good heading ability, and he's got good passing ability, 13. So I'm going to be able to play both of these guys as ball playing defenders instead of just central defenders. Uh, Willem Ghislaine is 27, Belgium. He's the one that we have the big offer on. Uh, we've got a bid. Don't think I'm going to take it. Again, he can pass decently, but very good defensive skills. So anxious to keep him. Uh, Mert Sahin is one of the young players that we're going to build around. 20-year-old Turkish player. 
Uh, 20 international caps already for Turkey and two goals. Uh, very well-rounded, very good pace, Stam. He's got all the Bielsa tactics, uh, stats that I like. 10 crossing, so pretty solid. I mean, at least he's good there. And he can also play defense, which you saw at Bolin. We had a hard time finding people that could do both. It was either or. Defensive mid is an area that we do have kind of a shortage at. Um, Gislaine's definitely playing on the back line. So we don't really have depth here. So Abbas is going to be our everyday player. Um, Gislaine we can bring up if we need to. And we do have depth at center back that we can rotate as well. So up in that defensive mid, again, very good physicals. Uh, I like his bravery, decision-making, and uh, positioning, heading, marking, tackling, all very good. So those are good stats for our defensive mid. We're going with Takahashi in the central mid role. Uh, he is Japanese, 25 years old. So we go from Volin with one Japanese player to uh, to Germany with another Japanese player. Uh, 17 balance and first touch is great. Passing is 17. So I'm looking for him to be a very big distributor. Uh, we do have Sam Samb as a Mazala on attack. He is uh, from Senegal, 28 years old. Again, 17 passing. I'm really happy with the midfield skills. Good pace, stamina's there. First touch, dribbling, composure, decision making. I think this guy is going to be a huge player for us. Now he is on attack. Remember, Mazala's drift out wide. We have these inside forwards. We're going to be going with Jacques Hunter. Now he's 25 years old in Welsh. He can play striker, and he will be uh, in the rotation, valued at 63 million dollars. Uh, 17 pace, 16 acceleration, first touch and dribbling are ecstatic good for me. He can also pass. I like the look of this guy. And then on the other side, I know these little asterisk marks are going to screw me up. It's Turkish. Ilhan Yopek, I think. Yopek, possibly. Let me know in the comments if you know. I know one of you guys out there, don't remember who, but one of you guys knows a little bit of basic Turkish at least, as I want to say you gave me some insight on another player. Now he's 28 years old, valued at $70 million, and uh, crossings 14, first touch 15, passing 17. He can take long shots as well, so cutting inside, look for him, and he's got a 13 finishing. I'm looking for him to really contribute to our scoring. And then up top, Adrian Aslani. He is a 25-year-old Albanian. Now, he can play the wings, and he's not the best finisher of their bunch, but those other guys fit in better at those other positions. So this guy has pace. He has height. Good first touch. Heading is at least average, so we can do mixed crosses to him. <coughs> and I'm looking forward to seeing how this works out. Now, the transfer window goes until September 2nd in Germany that we can register people. So we do have a good bit of time to take care of that. Very small squad. Now, the uh, you get nine subs, and you can use three. I think I read that, but it's nine subs on the bench, three in the game. Uh, we only have eight today. Uh, Jabnoon is injured. Uh, he got injured in... Uh, he was injured when I took over, so he's coming back uh, to training tomorrow. Uh, Cernan. Cernan is going to probably be in competition for our starting striker role. We take a look at him, 15 finishing, a lot of pace. He's probably going to be my starting striker, but he got injured uh, in training, sprained knee ligaments, so he's going to miss about a month and a half uh, from today. And Dira went off on loan. I didn't need him in the central mid, and in this tactic, we're not going to play a number 10. If I do move to one of the other tactics that we had at Volin that I'm looking at here, we do have a number 10. I might regret that. But right now, we're going to be going uh, short of player on the bench. Not a lot of Germans in the squad. We're going to have to address that over time. But we'll see how that goes. Let's go ahead and submit the team. Lacking match sharpness, we understand we're a player short. 
I'm going to pump fist. We're favorites for a reason. Now, the only bad thing, and the reason I almost passed on this job, is they have red kits. I'm really thinking about just instituting a red kit rule, but there's so many clubs with red kits, it's, it's like stupid. This is a derby game. We're playing main 05, and we're actually in our third team kits, which are yellow. That's crazy. I should have known that. Let's demand more. We've got three shots. They have zero, but we're looking good. Um, okay, we're going to go in. We're taking shots, but they're too far away. So let's turn work into box back on, and we'll see what that does. See if it helps us any, at least. All right, Gunderson, our first highlight of the save with this club. And that's stolen away, a sholly. Good first touch on the little volley there. Oh, there's, there's Yopek. And he goes near post but can't put it in. Looked good, though. I'm going to ignore that because I already did it. Come on, guys, catch up. All right, another highlight. Gunderson deep into the box. And we earn a corner. We had a shot there, a deflection. We're looking the better side so far. Oh, there's a foul on Vidic. All the W's I'm going to pronounce with V's just on the assumption that that's correct. That was not a good set piece by Maine. Musa Traore. Who does he play for? Oh. Well, I just forgot that this is all fictional players, all regens, because we're 32, 33 years in the future now. Oh, it's a header from Aslani that gets past the keeper. He's got our first goal, and we take a 1-0 lead in stoppage time here in the first half. Keeper came out for that ball, and Aslani just got his head on it and just flipped it into the net. Really good. I'm pretty happy with that. Now, this is a, uh, this is a derby, but it's also uh, the first uh, game of the Polkal Cup which is pretty good, I guess. Uh, I'm gonna pump fist, things are going well. I know you're capable of better. All right, they get the first highlight to kick off here. Aslani comes up, puts some pressure on them. And, oh, that's a bad ball. Aslani is there, turns on it. He needs to play it off. Yopek is on it. And it gets knocked away. We do have a couple of yellow cards here. I think I'm going to drop in and check my defense. And let's take off get stuck in. We're still going to use tighter marking. All right, let's encourage the team. Ooh, they didn't like that. Everybody's playing pretty well. We got a couple of six fives. Hunter plays it short to Abbas. There's a cross in, in the box. Thought they were holding the ball there as a penalty, but didn't happen. That's over to our Japanese player, Takahashi. And Hunter just skims it wide of the post. Come on, boys. Hunter plays it short again. I haven't done anything with set. Oh, my God. Hello. That's not a foul in Germany. Oh my God, we would have had a VAR review and probably three penalty kicks for that in, uh, in England. <laughs> These are some manly men playing football in Germany, I guess. Wow. Good header out. Hunter makes the run to the ball. Let's go ahead and make a sub here. Uh, let's see. Some is getting tired. So let's bring in Delu. He actually was put in by my coach as a starter, but we're gonna we're gonna go a different direction, and I'm gonna bring Yopek off, um, attacking mid center and striker. Coley's got really you know pretty decent finishing. If we go, 
If we go Coley, then I can move Coley up top. Aslani can actually play on the left and right. And I think we're good there. All right, so back to the match. Hunter bringing it up. Squared in. Oh, my goodness. All right, come on, boys. We do have the sub made. Let's ask him to demand more. 74th minute. All right, we played every corner short. Gunderson laid off to Hunter. It gets blocked, and it's lumped out of play. All right, we're going to bring on our last sub. Hunter is dragon. So he's played well. He's got a seven rating. Uh, Panubic. And I don't know these players any better than you guys. Now, he's more of a true uh, central mid winger, but he can play on that side. Look at the pace. 18 pace, 12 crossing, uh, I think. And I'm going to give him a pep talk. Uh, I'm going to... Oh, we're going to pump fist. I have faith in you. Confirm the sub. All right. He'll probably come in at the next stoppage. Hunter with the long cross to Aslani. Into the box. And I think the keeper played it out. The game called it a hopeful ball. There's the last sub for us. 11 shots, 5 on target. I think we've really controlled the match here. That one gets headed down. We look like we're going to be pretty good in the air right now. Early days, but, you know. Well, there's a cross in. Two shots by Aslani. And they both hit either his teammate or a defender. And it's cleared out of play. Final minutes. About five minutes left in the match. Plus stoppage time. That was not good. Some good defense there. Holds up the ball. Gives us time to regroup. Come on, boys. Three minutes of stoppage time. That one's lumped into the box. A uh, big run by Sahin Pavnovich and headers on target, but it goes off the crossbar for a goal kick. Come on, boys. Can we find one more? There's in, and it's a shot. Takahashi, his first goal of the, of the season for us, 2-0. That should be the final nail in the coffin in the Derby and getting us through to the next round of the Polko Cup. It was a good move. Oh, my buddy Sean playing some football manager now. And let's, uh, let's praise him here. Don't know if they'll like that. Some people don't. Vanden Kirkhoff. Vanden Kirkhoff. Dutch? You want to put money on that? I would guess Dutch. I tell you what, we're winning. I'm, I'm interested to see the stats on how many aerial battles we've won. Because we've played that pretty well. It does not give me that, does it? Here we go. 57%, 13 of 23. I like that. Player of the match, Mert Sahin. We said he was the young player we were going to be building around. 7.6 rating. Got a goal from our striker when he was up top and a midfielder, so that's good. Uh, I'm going to go outstretched arms. Well done, guys. A good win. Now, before we take off, we're going to take a look just around the team a little bit. Uh, don't mind any of that. We're going to go through here. Uh, let's look at dynamics, uh, the overview. So we've got good cohesion. We haven't changed the club much. Very good club atmosphere. Uh, we do have two players unhappy. Pavnovich is unhappy that his playing time no longer reflects. Well, I can't help him with that. 
Have I made a promise to him? I promised I would keep the general manager in place. And I don't... I don't recall making those promises. No, those were from May. Those were in May. Because th these last a year. So all of these were done prior to my arrival. All of these. Yeah. Not... Uh, not a big fan of those, but so he's unhappy, which is his prerogative, I suppose. But unhappy, same thing with Samson. Samson is not very good. Uh, I'm going to be trying to um, to move him out in all likelihood. Uh, Ponovich, we just saw he played well, uh, 28 years old and German, but it says he's a squad player, and I've been in charge one match, and he played. So I don't know what his issue with me is. Leadership support, not really. And if we look at the hierarchy, uh, we have um, Richmond Abbas is approaching the end of his career. Okay, how old is he? He's 32. So he's he might not retire soon. But if we take a look, we've got no players supporting me. 19 players with no opinion, and two players oppose me. Uh, I think I think this guy's unhappy because I tried to sell him. Is what I think was his issue. All right, so I think that's his issue. And Pavnovich, oh, he wants more lack of support. <laughs> oh well. Um, and what is his deal? He is, he's a squad player. I mean, if he comes off the bench and plays regularly, I mean, he's got great pace. I could definitely see playing him a lot. Um, so we'll see. Anyway, we get 258000 for that. Uh, the main boss uh, has to issue an apology to his fans. Uh, Tim Stover makes his debut. We get a win in the first round and bragging rights. Who's checking us out at the... Ah, uh, okay, he's looking to sign some players. And this guy is from Juventus. Okay. And Agent Kane is suggesting a $66 million fee, which I can't afford. How much is he valued at? He's valued, well, he's valued at 55. Those are some stupid numbers, aren't they? Jeez. All right, well... Competition, Pokal Cup, they want us to reach the quarterfinal. So we will work on that. And we have our first league match coming up. Uh, Bochum has not come available yet. And I was concerned that that was why I kind of jumped on this job when it came up last minute. Because I thought Bochum might be waiting, you know, to give their coach a run in the season. And I wasn't going to switch jobs in the middle of the season. So um, I just don't think, you know, Bielsa would leave if there was an issue, but I don't think he would up and leave for another job just because. So uh, that was my call there. Let's come back for, um, let's come back for highlights from uh, Fortuna, Fortuna Dusseldorf, and uh, then we'll see the game against uh, Holstel Kiel. And, not the greatest name name matchups, but that gets us past the transfer window so we can look at any new players. Also gives me a chance to play a few more matches, kind of get a better feel for the team and see what's going on. And uh, then we'll get through it. I don't really know much about Germany. Uh, let's see. Rules, 18 teams, 34 games. So you play each team twice. So it's a short season, 34 games. Uh, Premier League's, what, 38, I think? So short season, pretty quick seasons. Uh, top seven, well, top four make it to Champions League. Five through seven make it into the Euros, either group or playoff. And uh, then last three are either relegated or playoffs. Hell, those teams get 45 to 50 million. And... We're supposed to. We were supposed to avoid relegation. I told them. I told them because I wanted to try to get the job. I told them we could finish mid-table. Uh, so a mid-table finish nets us somewhere in the neighborhood of 
85 to 90 million and possibly gets us into Europe next season. So hope you guys aren't upset with the move. Uh, it was a spur of the moment thing, uh, but I'm excited. You know, I, I do like in these journeymans, I do like to switch jobs. And uh, I liked I liked some of the stuff that I saw uh, about the area, about the mainly about the club. Whereas uh, Bolin, it was the nuclear fallout stadium that got my attention. Uh, this one was actually uh, the club itself, uh, as I said in the in the beginning. Just the fact that they have been such a long-standing club and have so little to show for it. Uh, I think that's the goal here is to bring them up, get them into some qualifying, and try to get these guys some silverware, you know, of, of some sort. Uh, hopefully not this, more in this range. Uh, <laughs> so we'll give that a whirl. Let me know what you guys think about the move. Uh, if you have any input on how high these transfer fees are and trying to sign German players because evidently they are at a premium. Uh, let me know in the comments. We'll catch you guys next time. Have a good one. Bye.